Hello everyone. In today's session, we'll be doing something which you have not done in real numbers. So something extra is required to understand more about complex numbers. So this is about the Moivre's theorem and the nth roots of unity. Mind you, please, the pronunciation is the Moivre. In many books or people, they call it as de Moivre's theorem. I mean, if you go by spelling, you may remember it as de Moivre's theorem, but the actual pronunciation is the Moivre, the Moivre theorem. Now, the theorem is that for any n and theta, cos theta plus i sin theta whole raised to n is cos n theta plus i sin n theta. I am not getting into proof of it, but those who are interested, they can actually prove themselves. Like take n equal to 2 cos theta plus i sin theta into cos theta plus i sin theta. We know how to multiply two numbers, complex numbers in polar form. Arguments get added. So cos 2 theta plus i sin 2 theta is expected and so on. So this is just some hint though for them, those who want to prove the theorem. Now theorem is important. From problem solving point of view, cos theta plus i sin theta whole raised to n can be replaced by cos n theta plus i sin n theta is important. So the theorem. Okay. Now, let us move towards nth roots of unity. I have written there n greater or equal to 2. Thing is, generally n equal to 2, that is square root, we have already done. And n equal to 3, that also we have already done, q roots of unity. So, in most of the cases, if at all we want to use, we should go for n equal to 4 onwards. But results, whatever we do here in nth roots of unity, they are applicable for square root and cube root both. So, I would write this as n greater or equal to 2. So, if I have to call z as nth root of unity, then z raised to n equal to 1. Unity means 1. I hope you all remember. So, z raised to n equal to 1 or I can say z raised to n minus 1 equal to 0. Understand one thing. The moment you see z raised to n minus 1 equal to 0, we have understood this as a polynomial equation. The moment you talk about polynomial equation, then factorization theorem or further factors, I mean these steps come automatically on their own naturally it should come to your mind so some results i am writing here that i factorize z raised to n minus 1 as z minus 1 into the second factor is z raised to n minus 1 plus z raised to n minus 2 etc up to plus 1 so this second equation or rather i should say equation which i have rewritten from equation 1 is also important and also if i call since equation 1 is nth degree equation. So, we are expecting n roots of this equation. One of them z equal to 1 that comes automatically from equation 2 that is very much visible also. So, if alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 etc up to alpha n minus 1, I mean n minus 1 roots, if I have to take those would be n minus 1 nth roots of unity different from 1 and they involve in the factorization. How do I write that factorization? By using factorization theorem, which we have already done in polynomials in our previous classes. So, z raised to n minus 1 plus z raised to n minus 2 plus and so on up to 1 can be factorized. This will have n minus 1 linear factors. And what would be those factors? z minus alpha 1, z minus alpha 2, etc. up to z minus alpha n minus 1. Mind you please, this third equation what I have written, it is true for all z. The moment I say it is true for all z, it becomes an identity. So, if I wish, I can replace z by a particular quantity of your choice on both the sides. But mind you please, not only on one side. You will have to substitute on both the sides and you may write some further more results also. Now, these three equations are important in our further procedures. Okay. So, my further proceeding would be towards actually finding what are those nth roots of unity z raised to n minus 1 equal to 0 is to be solved and this will give me n roots. Now, what type of roots I am expecting? Now, the moment you write z raised to n equal to 1 and then z equal to 1 raised to 1 by n, that 1 needs to be written as in the polar form. So, polar form of 1 would be cos 2k pi plus i sin 2k pi. So, cos 2k pi plus i sin 2k pi whole raised to 1 by n is your z, right? Now, use that theorem and rewrite it as cos of 2k pi by n plus i sin 2k pi by n. Now, what is k here? k is integer. What kind of integer values we are going to give? We are going to give values as 0, 1, 2, etc. And we need up to n minus 1. Now, mind you please, 
I am giving values from 0 to n minus 1 means actually I am giving n values. So, z equal to 1 also will be involved when we give different values to k. Now, k equal to 0 gives me z equal to 1. If I give k equal to 1, then I will get z as cos 2 pi by n plus i sin 2 pi by n. Now, this is called as alpha 1 what I have written and that is called the principal root. Okay. I mean, this is a standard term. Somewhere if you get to read principal root, you should not get perturbed. So, I have written specially. Now, k equal to 2 would lead to cos 4 pi by n plus i sin 4 pi by n. That I am naming as alpha 2 and so on. If I continue like this and I can go up to k equal to n minus 1. So, that last would be cos of 2 times n minus 1 pi upon n plus i times sin 2 times n minus 1 pi upon n. And that would be alpha n minus 1. So, in this way you can get n n roots of unity. Let us proceed further. And the next is that take properties about nth roots of unity. Now, when we look at that equation z raised to n minus 1 equal to 0, my observation is there is no term of z raised to n minus 1. So, coefficient of z raised to n minus 1 is 0. And hence, the sum of the roots would be 0. This we have already done in algebra before, right? So, I have this result that 1 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 up to alpha n minus 1 is 0. And also, I can rewrite this further and write alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 up to alpha n minus 1 equal to minus 1. So, basically these two properties, they go hand in hand. I mean, one is implication of other you can say. The next one would be that alpha 1, which is cos 2 pi by n plus i sin 2 pi by n. If I square it, what will I get? Again, use the theorem and write it as cos 4 pi by n plus i sin 4 pi by n. And what was cos 4 pi by n plus i sin 4 pi by n? That was alpha 2. That means alpha 2 is alpha 1 square. And I am saying further, which you can try on yourself. Alpha 3 would be alpha 1 cube. Alpha 4 would be alpha 1 raised to 4 and so on. And using that, I can write next property. We had with us 1 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 up to alpha n minus 1 equal to 0. Now replace that alpha 2 by alpha 1 square. Replace alpha 3 by alpha 1 cube. And we get this property as 1 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 1 square plus alpha 1 cube and so on up to alpha 1 raised to n minus 1. This is equal to 0. Now let us move towards the next one. And the next one is nth roots of unity form a geometrical progression with common ratio cos 2 pi by n plus i sin 2 pi by n. Mind you please that cis notation is for cos plus i sin. So cos 2 pi by n plus i sin 2 pi by n. This is the common ratio of the geometric progression. Once we do sequence and series or those who have already done, they can check themselves. And those who have not yet done, once they do sequence and series, they will be able to understand geometric progression and the corresponding common ratio. So I am not taking in detail right now this particular property. Now, one more thing what we had observed is that z raised to n minus 1 plus z raised to n minus 2 plus and so on plus z plus 1. This was factorized as z minus alpha 1 into z minus alpha 2 up to z minus alpha n minus 1 by factorization. Thing. And this is true for all z. If that is the case, I can replace z by a particular quantity. If I put z equal to 1 there, I will get expression for 1 minus alpha 1, 1 minus alpha 2, this product up to 1 minus alpha n minus 1. This I have taken here by substituting z equal to 1, which leads to answer for that product as n. Mind you please, in some problem solving session, you may be required to find out 2 minus alpha 1, 2 minus alpha 2, etc. So, that's the hint that there in that particular problem, you may have to replace z by 2. So, this one particular place, I have given you that hint that you can replace z by quantity of your choice. So, 1 minus alpha 1, 1 minus alpha 2 up to 1 minus alpha n minus 1, this product has turned out to be n. This product is important which may appear again in problems. Now, let us move towards the next and next is extremely important because it looks as if this has got something to do with trigonometry. Sine terms are appearing. Sine pi by n, sine 2 pi by n, sine 3 pi by n. The entire product, we have to show that it is n upon 2 raised to n minus 1. The thing is, such kind of expression has appeared in trigonometry chapter also. And actually, answer for that particular problem is to be given with help of complex numbers and not by standard trigonometric approach. So, I am taking this particular expression here in the continuation of the topic complex numbers. Now, if we have to show that the entire product is nothing but n upon 2 raised to n minus 1, from where we would start? What takes your attention? 
that pi by n, 2 pi by n, 3 pi by n, we should be able to understand that what pi by n stands for or what 2 pi by n stands for. And hence, I go for Argon diagram. And what I realize is that if I name real axis and imaginary axis, and if I take a unit circle, I will be able to place, say, some point P, 1, and remaining n roots of unity, I place on the unit circle as alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, etc. And last would be alpha n minus 1. Now, if I join O to Q and O to P and then PQ, I see there's some triangle OPQ. I drop perpendicular from O to PQ and name foot of the perpendicular as M. Now, understand one thing. We have already seen geometrical interpretation of mod Z1 minus Z2. So, mod 1 minus alpha 1 would be length PQ. That we already know. Okay. If that is the thing, then PQ is mod 1 minus alpha m and from triangle OMP, I should be able to write something. What is that? PM upon OP is sine pi by m. Correct? PM upon OP is sine pi by m. So what would be PM? Because OP is 1, it turns out to be simply sine pi by m. So by doing this entire exercise, what I tried to do? I tried to give interpretation to sine pi by n, which is appearing in the left hand side at the top. So sine pi by n is known to me and that is length pm. And now where length pm comes into picture, it is half of pq. So if required, pq would be written as twice of pm and it would be nothing but 2 sine pi by n. That is how we proceed. So length pq is twice of sine pi by n. So 1 minus alpha 1 this modulus of this would be nothing but 2 sin pi by n. Okay, that 2 is additional. That may not be required in the left hand side expression. But at least sin pi by n is of our interest. Now, this way, can we proceed? Now, similarly, I can write mod of 1 minus alpha 2. And that would be 2 sin 2 pi by n. 1 minus alpha 3 if I go for. And if I take its modulus, it would be 2 sin 3 pi by n. Continue like this. And lastly, take the product. Product of what? 1 minus alpha 1, 1 minus alpha 2, etc. Moduli of them. And that would lead to 2 raised to n minus 1 sin pi by n, sin 2 pi by n, sin 3 pi by n, etc. And what we wanted to have? We wanted to have at the top sin pi by n, sin 2 pi by n, sin 3 pi by n, etc. Correct? So, remove that 2 raised to n minus 1 from the left hand side and the final answer would be nothing but n upon 2 raised to n minus 1. This is what is appearing on the right hand side. So, this is how we prove that property. I deliberately took the entire proof because you should be able to understand that what we mean by angle pi by n there, what we mean by angle 2 pi by n, how those n minus 1 nth roots of unity are contributing. I mean, to understand the properties clearly, I had to take help of Argon diagram also. So, you will realize that how smoothly we use Argon diagrams whenever we want to prove the question, I mean, prove the required result or, I mean, problem solving. Argon diagram is heart of complex numbers. I mean, here I finish my session. Next time when we meet, again, something new will be there. Hope you have liked this video. To subscribe, please click here. And if you want to place an order for the book, please click on this side. Thank you.